Okay, question two. 2.1, describe the structure of glycogen. We don't need to know any of this intro to the question in order to uh, to do that. Well, okay, so what are they looking for for structure? They're always looking for bonding. They're always looking for the, the um, yeah, the branch to unbranch. So let's just see what comes out of my pen when I start this. So it's a polymer of glucose. Alpha glucose. I'm going to write alpha just to make it totally clear. Okay, polymer of alpha glucose joined by glycosidic bonds in condensation reactions. Glycosidic bonding is 1, 4, and 1, 6 linkages, producing a very branched molecule. So it's branched. The type of bonding is between the first carbon and the fourth carbon to produce the straight chain, and the first carbon and the sixth part carbon to form the branch. Check out the videos if you don't know what that means. Um, I think that's loads for two marks. To be honest, I could go on. I don't think we could say about why it's branched, but that would be linking it to its function. This question is all about the structure. This is good enough. Okay, during early pregnancy, the glycogen in the cells of the lining of the uterus are an important source of energy for the embryo. Suggest how glycogen acts as a source of energy. Do not Include transport across membranes. Well, I, this is the paper one, which means they're not really looking for year two key terms. But we can say glycogenolysis will hydrolyze the the, the glycogen hydro, hydrolyze the glycosidic bonds to make glucose, which is respired to form ATP. Okay, so glycogenolysis hydrolyzes the glycosidic bonds to form glucose. We could maybe put, oh, I've got hydrolysis in the hydrolyzers. We don't have to say hydrolysis reaction. Glucose is respired to produce ATP. I think that's fine. Suggest and explain in two ways that the cell surface membrane of the cell lining of the uterus may be adapted to allow rapid transport of nutrients. So it's a cell membrane, and we've got to suggest and explain um, Transport of nutrients. I'm going to pick my nutrients first. So we could say um, carrier proteins for co-transport or for the absorption of glucose. We probably don't have to say co-transport with, with sodium. I actually don't know whether this is with a co-transporter or whether just straight up facilitated diffusion. We might want to then, maybe in fact, we should go with two different things. One could be a protein channel for the absorption of ions. Um, and what would an ion be used for? We'd maybe pick one. Mm, calcium ions for the activation of ATPAs. So, I mean, for the reason, I think an example is going to be help us to get marks here.
So I've said protein channel for the facilitated diffusion of calcium ions for use to activate ATPase. So I've given the channel, the adaptation, or maybe we should say many, because the adaptation is there's lots of them. Carrier proteins for active transport of glucose against the concentration gradient, even though, or we could maybe say for the rapid transport of glucose using ATP for respiration. So what other things in the cell membrane? The phospholipid bilayer, but it's not really an adaptation. Everything has a phospholipid bilayer that has a cell membrane, so I didn't want to go there. I think that's probably okay. It'll be interesting to see the mark scheme here. I'm not dead set as to what those marks are going to be, but again, I've jammed it full of key terms. The adaptation part, I think, is the fact that there's lots of these things, more than you would normally find on any other given cell membrane. Okay. Part four, I'm gonna do in pencil because again, you don't have mega working space. So I find it easier to do these in pencil in case I make a mistake and I need the space back again, basically. Okay, so um, day one is um, one division. Day two and three equals um, 24 divided by eight equals three. And they've got, obviously, that's the same for day two and three. So there's seven divisions. Um, each one doubles. So we go from one cell at time zero, day one, day two. Uh, in fact, this is division one, two, all the way up to, I wonder if we'll have space up to seven. So you have one cell, two cells, four cells and you have eight cells. So this should be two to the power seven, I think, 128. If you want to do that, you could actually just do that as um, one times two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have 128 cells. which is two because there's each time it doubles and you it doubles seven times equals 128. So again, just show this to the examiner. I'm kind of working this out on the fly as you will be, but try and keep some organization with your working. Um, this is the mean volume after three days. So we want to divide this by 128 basically. So it's, um, 4.2 times 10 to the power of minus 3. I might just put all of that in brackets, to be honest with you, because I feel like it will treat it as a complete thing. Divide this by 128, which means the number is going to get smaller, which means my negative indices is going to get bigger. It's going to be a smaller value. Okay, so it's given my answer in standard form. So I'm then going to do 4.2 times 10 to the power of minus 3 divided by 128, which is going to give me 3.28125 times 10 to the minus 5. So my answer, I'm going to use the same number of decimal places as used in the question, 3.3 times 10 to the minus five. I'll give my answer in a standard form. I don't have to include units, it's millimeters cubed. Um, that is how you do it.